Previously, I installed a Samba server on this machine so that I could mount a folder onto different computers in order to transfer files. And that's good for an iCloud-like approach to things, but I also want a more back-end style approach. So I'll use a file transfer protocol or FTP server for that. And this will allow for some simple file transfers. So one use case would be, for example, if I have a QR code, that QR code can have the address of a particular file on my server. And if that file is a PDF, for example, I can scan that QR code with my iPhone and it will simply pull up the PDF. So it's a useful server to have if you want a more simplified file transfer. The Samba approach in that instance would be on my iPhone, I would have to mount the Samba drive then manually navigate the folders in order to find the file I want. Whereas with FTP, I can call it directly using a URL. So we're going to use the VSFTPD package in order to set this up. So we're going to do sudo apt install VSFTPD. And my password is on the clipboard. I do want to install it. During the installation process, the VSFTPD system is going to create a new user on the server. And this is not like your typical user, like my user here, Eric. This user is a very low privilege user that exists for the purpose of working with this system specifically. And we can see this because it will create a home directory for that user. And that is under slash SRV slash, well, if we just look there, we can see FTP. So this user FTP has a home directory in the server folder. And if you put any files in that location, we will be able to access them using FTP. Now, in order to actually access them, we need to have the correct privileges unless otherwise specified. So let's take a look at the configuration file. So we're going to use nano to edit slash etsy slash vsftpd.conf or configuration. And here we can see all of the parameters for vsftpd. And the one that we are concerned with right now is going to be anonymous enabled. Now, if anonymous is not enabled, like it is not by default, then we will have to use the user with privileges on that folder in order to access these things. So we'll have to log in. And for my purposes here, it's unnecessary to do that. And likely if you're setting this up for a home server, it's not necessary to have people log in every time. So I'm going to allow anonymous users here. And again, this is use case specific. I'm not, act I'm not putting this out on the internet. This is for my local network only. I've used very secure passwords and have done a lot to make sure the system is secure. So this is okay for me. So I'm going to enable anonymous. I'm going to exit and I'm going to restart the program. And now that it's restarted, we can do a little test. What I'm going to do is create just a basic test file in the directory, in that FTP user's home directory. And this is going to allow me to test everything out to make sure I can actually access that file from my Mac. So what I'll do is I have to use sudo here. And actually, let's explain why. So if I do ls-l on slash SRV. And what this is going to do is give me a long form list of everything in this directory. And that will also enumerate the privileges. And what we can see is that the folder is owned by root and it is also shared by the group FTP. Now the user FTP is part of the group FTP. And as such, they have the ability to read and execute files in this in this folder. So what we can do is as the root, so we're going to use sudo to step into the root account for this command, we are going to create a text file 
in that folder. Uh, not that. And in here, where I'm just going to write hello. I'll write that out, close it. And now what I can do is come over to my web browser, and this is on my Macintosh, and I can type in to the URL the address for my server and that file. Now, usually we say HTTP up here, and that is one type of internet protocol or network protocol. And instead, we're going to do FTP. And this is just another protocol. And then I want to put in the IP address of the system. And instead of the IP address for me, since I have set up host names for these servers, I can actually use that host name. So I'm going to do library.homodeus.local. And that is the host name I have configured for this particular laptop on this server. So then we need to specify the actual file and it's test.txt. And when I open it, we can see hello there. Now this is particularly useful with PDFs and QR codes, as I mentioned at the beginning. Now, as it stands, all of the documents that I want to be available on FTP have to go in this slash SRV slash FTP folder. And I can create as many subdirectories there as I like. But I have created on my root directory, I've created this folder here, documents. And that's where I want to keep all of my FTP documents. That's just how I'm going to be using the system. I want to keep it clean in this way. So what I need to do is point this service to that directory in order for it to look for FTP files there. And the way you do this is by changing the home directory of the FTP user. And this will be done with the command sudo. So we'll use root in order to run this command. User mod and then dash D to say that we are going to change the home directory. We are changing it to documents and then we are going to do this for the user FTP. Okay, now that is done. But if we do ls-l again on the root directory, we can see that this documents folder is owned by the user Eric, that's me, and the group Eric. Now, as such, I can put something in there. So let's do nano slash slash test.txt and I will say hello again, write, exit, and I can put the document in there, but if I come back over to my browser and I refresh, it doesn't actually work. Oh, actually, it's not. <laughs> I need to restart the service first. One, one moment. Okay, now if I refresh the page, we'll get an error message. And that's because it is currently owned by my user and my group. So this FTP user can't actually access it. So what I'm going to do is modify the permissions here. And the way I'm going to do that is sudo chone. So change owner. And then I'm going to say Eric colon FTP. And I'm going to put that on documents. And the reason I'm doing this is that I want to maintain ownership of the folder. That way I can go in and change things. So the user ownership is me, but the group ownership is FTP. That way I can go in and add the files, change the files, do whatever I want to it. And this FTP group, as we can see in the permissions here, can read and write, but I should actually give them Read and execute. That's what. That's exactly what I want there. I was looking at the wrong folder. So if we run that, good to go. We'll just check with ls-l on slash, and we can see Eric and FTP. If you remember the dash l on slash srv slash FTP, we can see that it was owned by the user root and... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I typed the wrong folder. We just want srv. So it was owned by the user root and the group FTP. We've done relatively the same thing here, except we've made me the owner of the folder instead of root and FTP as the group. So if I come back over to my web browser and refresh, 
we get hello again. So that is now working. Now, if I want to make a subdirectory in there, I can just make dir slash documents slash files, we'll say. And then I'm going to create a new file in there. And notice I no longer have to use sudo. And that's because I am the owner of the folder. So I can make any changes I want without having to step into the root user's account. So nano slash documents files slash testing.txt. And we'll say this is a test. Okay, now I can come back over here. And what I'll do is change the URL to files slash dot txt. And there we go. And this can be used for any kind of files you want and accessing them, writing them, switching them between machines. And that is basically how you're going to set up FTP. Now, are there, there are some more advanced configurations where you can use uh, HTTPS or SSL, that is. And that's, for my purposes, not really necessary and can be a little complex. But if you're going to open this up to the internet, you would definitely want to look into doing that. Now, the final thing I want to do is to actually clean up the system a little bit. So if you, if we look in slash SRV, we can see that that FTP folder is still there and I will not be using that. So I am going to step into the root account for a moment and remove dash R for recursive because this is a directory and I'm going to remove slash SRV slash FTP. And now, slash SRV is empty. Now I'm going to keep SRV because it is a very common top level directory that is used by a number of different programs. So I'm going to keep that one, but that internal one of FTP, I'm not gonna keep anything in there. So just to keep the system nice and clean, I am going to delete it. All right, so we all know how this part works. If this video is useful to you, please hit the like button. It helps me grow the channel and it'll help other people find the video. Also, this is part of a larger project where I'm trying to build a company starting with just three old laptops. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. So thank you for watching.